Cooper, where's my dog? Oh, he's in the other room. Cooper. <laughs> Cooper! When you have to spray your dog. Do you have an irritable chihuahua? Please tell me about him. Cooper, don't try to eat my old Chinese food. He's a chicken's ear. First things first, before we get out of the way, because it's bugging me, so I know it's gonna bug somebody, I'm usually not this greasy. I just filmed, I'm filming this video at night. Um, I wasn't planning on filming this video at night. I was planning on filming this um, yesterday, and I filmed it yesterday, and then I did a little fuck up, and I deleted the file somehow, and I have motivation to film it now, so I'm just gonna film it now. Um, I already put on my night moisturizer, which is very uh, greasy looking on my skin, so this is why I look like that. Um, also, I will probably accidentally look at the view viewfinder a lot because um, I like looking at myself. And also, I'm looking at how greasy I am, so just some things to keep in mind before we start. All right. Let's talk about Brandy Melville. Brandy Melville is your typical fast fashion brand. Um, it originated in Italy, it was founded in the 1970s, and the kind of mythos behind the name of the brand Brandy Melville is this story about a American girl named Brandy and a British man named Melville. Who names your child Melville? I'm sorry, but what the fuck. Um, they meet in Rome, they fall in love, and that's the story of Brandy Melville. Now obviously with a story like that you get a kind of feel for what the brand is. It's um, a very European take on fast fashion. It's very... Um, it, it goes on trends, it's very youthful, but it is simple and very like bare bones of what that thing is, but it's also very feminine and girly. I'm going to show you some example pictures here. Good boy! They actually, fun fact, get a lot of their um, style inspiration for new clothing from taking pictures of in-store customers and workers. I have actually um, been asked if they can take a picture of my outfit for like the Brandy Melville, like for this database essentially that they have. And that was, that was kind of fun. I felt special that day. Not gonna lie. Some of the reasons that Brandy Melville has risen to popularity over the recent years is the rise of kind of fashion, young influencers such as people like Emma Chamberlain, um, and a lot of like Instagram girls who are Brandy Melville ambassadors. Now, you may be wondering as to why I'm telling you the history of this one brand, this one fast fashion brand that you may or may not have heard of. Why I'm talking about it is because Brandy Melville is actually one of the most controversial brands that is on the market nowadays. And why is that? It's because Brandy Melville only caters to one size. And this one size is a small to an extra small. One of the other reasons Brandy Melville has been critiqued over the years is that they show literally no diversity in the models that they have for their brand, which I will get to in a second, um, and for their website. Absolutely no diversity. Now, in regards to Brandy Melville's marketing techniques, they essentially don't have marketing. Now, this is actually kind of genius when you really look at the brand because if you look at their Instagram, there are no like originally made posts by the brand. They just take people on Instagram who wear Brandy Melville and tag Brandy Melville and just post that on the Instagram. Barely any captions, barely any engagement at all. And this actually works. In this kind of new age of marketing where brands are hiding under this guise of being cool, relatable tweets, or brands are trying to trick you into um, self-love and self-acceptance by buying these products, it's kind of nice to just have a brand that especially is targeted towards young teenage girls um, that you know, they're not trying to be your friend, they're just trying to give you a product because 
we view that as kind of cringy <laughs> when brands are trying to market towards us really harshly. And also it's kind of like a, when you look at the Instagrams, it's like a Pinterest board. But the girls that they do show on the Instagrams are pretty much all white. It's very rare that you'll see a person of color. And obviously since it's a one size brand, it is only thin white women that you see on the Brandy Melville Instagrams, which is really their only source of marketing. Now you think things like this would hurt the brand, especially in today's climate. Now we've seen a lot of brands nowadays that are going into that pro-inclusivity route, which sometimes can feel earnest, but a lot of times can feel kind of disingenuous. One time that I've seen it that I think has worked well, that, you know, the reasoning can vary, but is the brand Airy, which is the branch off brand, I've said brand like 20 times now, of American Eagle. Now, American Eagle has kind of fallen in my opinion. It's not really as relevant as it was like in like 2015, but Airy has kind of been like the revival of the brand. Airy, if you don't know, is the like loungewear slash undergarment branch of American Eagle. And in their marketing, it, all the models look like real women. They all have like, there's no retouchings. Um, it's different sizes, it's um, different races, like it's a very inclu pro-inclusivity is really what they're trying to preach to you with a brand like Airy. And of course we see this a lot, marketing nowadays um, has changed a bit, it's not changed a lot, but you know you'll see a lot more um, posters and models and fashion imagery that is a lot more inclusivity, well inclusive, that is a lot more inclusive and a lot more diverse. Which, let's be real, most of these brands are doing it for a cash grab. They don't genuinely care about diversity, but I mean, what we're gonna, we'll, we'll, we'll take what we can get, you know what I mean? But Brandy Melville, unlike most brands that have actively tried to be better, especially in the rise of the Black Lives Matter um, marches, Brandy Melville has kept their answer to a firm no. <laughs> Now, they haven't actually said anything regarding this, but silence speaks volumes, and them not saying anything is a passive, no, we're good, thanks. So why is Brandy Melville so keen on doing this? Why is their marketing so intense on marketing to a small group of women um, and nobody else? Why? Because exclusivity sells. <laughs> exclusivity. Next title card. Think of a Brandy Melville model in your head. Now I know I've described this already, but just do it, okay? Are you thinking of like a, a thin, pretty, young girl? She lives like in California. That's kind of what you're, what you're stewing around in your head. Maybe you're thinking of some girl you saw on Instagram. Maybe you're thinking of Emma Chamberlain. That's the energy that Brandy Melville wants to portray at all times with their brand. Now, let's be real here. Brands forever have been pushing this ideal of beauty, this Eurocentric beauty standard. And Brandy Melville is honestly just less unabashed of it than most brands are. And instead of deterring customers, it actually brings more in because everyone wants to be the cool kid. Everyone wants to be the brandy girl, as I lovingly call them. And as we have seen, this has been incredibly harmful to a lot of girls. And let's keep in mind, the demographic for Brandy Melville is teenage girls. It's been extremely harmful to them. A lot of girls have written and talked about how they felt like they had to <laughs> starve themselves to fit the Brandy Melville fit. Especially for young impressionable women who already have to face so much scrutiny by society, it just feels so disheartening to see this. And you might be thinking to yourself, it's not that bad. Oh, I think you're just overanalyzing something. That may be true because I overanalyze everything. But if you see the hardcore fans of Brandy Melville, it is kind of weird. I have never seen like fandoms for fashion brands that aren't like high-end designer brands or like guys who like 
hype beast streetwear stuff ever before. Like it's so weird. People make fan like Instagrams dedicated to new drops, new releases. Um, if something's being sold out, they talk about like they show their brandy collections. Um, yeah. One thing that Brandy Melville does that I think does create this kind of obsessive cult like following, but I think is really smart, is that they will have um, multiple like a cut of a shirt and they will remake that kind of cut in multiple different like fabrics and and stuff like that or have different prints on it um but they call it the same name so but and it's always like named after like girls so like for example just making it at the top of my head i make a shirt for brandy melville this is my shirt it's called the moxie shirt and then i make it i, I release it once and then it sells and then I release it again but in a pink and then I release it again but in a brown and then I release it again but in a purple but everyone loves that cut of that shirt so they're gonna keep buying it even though it's just the same shirt in different patterns or people will really like one certain pattern of Brandy Melville shirts they'll like I don't know, like a, a pink polka dot print a lot. So they really want it to be sold in their favorite Moxie cut shirt or their favorite Maya cut shirt. So doing this, it kind of becomes like you're dealing Pokemon cards. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> too, too nerdy. It's not that nerdy. It is kind of nerdy though. So when you think about it that way, it's kind of like you have to, you, you gotta get them all. You gotta catch them all. Is that what the Pokey, Pokey nerds say? And I don't know, I think that's actually a very interesting technique they do, and it creates this cult following, this fandom. And don't even get me started on Brandy Melville Depop sellers. Oh my god, they're literally scamming people. You can go on Depop for like two minutes and you will find like a bunch of people trying to sell Brandy Melville crap, and it's like people will auction off Brandy Melville shirts, like you can auction off a crop top for like $150 and I'm like what is going on? <laughs> it's absolutely insane. I don't understand it and it stresses me out. <laughs> and another thing just to keep in mind with this, Brandy Melville is pretty reasonably priced in my opinion for what you're getting. Um, it's in the same price range as Urban Outfitters, a little bit cheaper in some aspects though. But yeah, it's like reasonably priced for what it is. So again, it's really marketing to that teenage girl audience because that's the teenage girl budget. I'm going to do a small defense of Brandy Melville. Small defense of Brandy Melville. I can't make this video in a good conscience without telling you my weird history with Brandy Melville and also telling you that I own quite a bit of Brandy Melville. When I was I, a wee tot, no, when I was like six, 15, 16 and I like got my first job and I was making money for myself for the first time, um, it's really when I kind of started figuring out what my own style was. I've always had a very eccentric taste, but it kind of dulled out over the years because I, <laughs> um, you know, puberty hit and I got really self-conscious about my body and also, you know, I just didn't really want to be called a stripper in the hallway anymore for like wearing a knee-high skirt, knee-high skirt, for wearing like a skirt with knee-high socks, so. But anyway, as I was like looking for different styles, and different clothes that I wanted to wear, um, I started following YouTubers like Emma Chamberlain. I don't really watch Emma Chamberlain anymore, but I adored her when I was like in high school, um, right when she kind of started her YouTube channel. Um, because it's very relatable to see, like, me and Emma Chamberlain are the same age, um, and she's, you know, so cool, but she's quirky like me, she loves thrifting like me, you know, um, and she bought Brandy Melville, so I went and I looked for Brandy Melville stuff and I really liked it, like, I, I was, like, surprised that unlike stores like Urban Outfitters or Forever 21 or H&M where in those stores I would find like one thing I liked from their brand 
in Emma or in Brady Melville, I liked almost everything. I was like, oh my god. And when I figured out the whole one size thing, I kind of liked it. Now, <laughs> this is, you know, trigger warning here. But at this point in my life, I was extremely insecure about my body. Again, just going through, just finished going through puberty. Yikes. Um, so it kind of felt cool to have a brand that um, catered to my body type and was a brand specifically telling me, again, as a thin white girl, hey, this is a brand for pretty thin white girls. Here you go. And of course you're gonna eat that up. Of course you will. And when my body dysmorphia and my insecurities got way worse, I had a point in time where I was like obsessively just like looking at all the Brandy Melville Instagrams um, or the Brandy Melville hashtags and just looking at these thin women who I, even again, as a girl who can fit in Brandy Melville was still in my head like, oh my god, I wish I was these girls. This is the thing about exclusivity. You will never, ever, ever feel like you are part of the in crowd, no matter who you are. We just got deep. I'm sorry. I can't ever say anything deep without like doing something stupid like this or like this after. So with that, the things that I actually liked about the brand besides the exclusivity were one, I am a thin woman. woman. <laughs> I am a thin gal and it's nice to have a brand that specifically caters to your kind of figure because, you know, I just find when you're shopping and you're trying on something that is to, to it's supposed to look good on an extra small to an extra large, it just doesn't work sometimes. Sometimes it's nice to have clothes that like specifically are made for your kind of body type. Yeah. It's like I, I can go into a Brandy Melville and look at something and I know right away how that's going to fit on me and if I'm going to like it or not on me, you know? The clothing is good quality. I think for the price that you're getting, it's quite good quality. All of the pieces that I have from there, they, like, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, the one thing I will say to that though is I do work at a secondhand store so we do get a lot of old Brandy Melville and I have noticed the older stuff is like in shit quality so either their production value ups like it went up um over the past couple of years or the items i have now are just going to completely disintegrate in a couple of years we'll see i genuinely really like the styles that brandy melville has <laughs> um i don't know it just a lot of the pieces i have from there are i would say classics in my wardrobe and things that i just always go back to because they're good basics i don't like buying trendy stuff from brandy melville because i just don't like it but like the fit i like the material i always think it's like trendy and it fits me in a nice way i don't know i know how i just said like i don't like buying trendy pieces but they are still trendy because it is for like a teenage kind of demographic and even though i'm not like I'm 19, but I'm not really, a t I'm not gonna call myself a teenager anymore because I don't want to be one of those people. But um, I just genuinely like how they're kind of modest in my standards of modesty. Um, I don't know, they're just, I, you know when like you go to like Urban Outfitters and they're selling like a two-piece um, latex bodysuit and you're like, I'm never gonna wear that ever um, and I'd feel horrible if I did wear it my Brandy Melville stuff, it's stuff that's simple, cute, and I feel like, and I can very realistically wear every day of my life. Of my life. Now, I know to anyone listening to that who is um, not white or thin is rolling their eyes at me, and that's very fair. It is extremely valid of you. I am just giving you my perspective. I'm not trying to make this a sob story at all. And if I have, then like, tell me. <laughs> but I am trying to kind of give you a lens as to how teenage girls and just girls can latch themselves onto this fashion brand 
um, so easily and so quickly. And how it's developed the cult following it has now because I was almost one of those girls until my wokeness got me out of there. Damn it. <laughs> one of the defenses I do hear about Brandy Melville that I find very dumb that I should, that I want to talk about now is that people say, well, there are plus size clothing brands that are like, they only sell plus size clothing. Why can't there be a brand that is specifically just for petite women? And that is missing the point completely. <laughs> Should there- can there be brands that are just for petite women? Yes, absolutely. Topshop has like a Topshop petite section of their store. Personally, I literally hate Topshop so much. Like astronomically, I hate Topshop. But that's just an example. <laughs> it's a thing that has- that- it is a thing. Petite clothing stores are a thing. They're not like super popular, but they are a thing. But that's not what Brandy Melville is trying to do. You know that, right? <laughs> and they're so obviously trying to just cater to that group and make everyone feel bad that they're not in that group. They're not a plus size. They're not like the equivalent of a plus size brand. Honestly, if they said that, I would not mind. I think that would be a good thing, frankly. Just be more honest. <laughs> but alas. Now. We get to a kind of fun point in the video where I'm going to give you some tips on how to buy Brandy Melville clothes without actually buying Brandy Melville clothes. Now, <laughs> my credentials for this. I work at a secondhand store. A secondhand store is different than a thrift store. A thrift store takes donations. A secondhand store gets donations, picks out the ones they want, Typically, they're based on fast fashion brands um, or like trendy items. They take those and then you donate the rest. And it's also different than a consignment store. A consignment store does the same process, but it's all designer luxury items. We clear? I work at a secondhand store. Okay. Um, <laughs> and because I work at a secondhand store, we do get a lot of Brandy Melville and we get a lot of other items that are similar to Brandy Melville that I will talk about in a second. Um, and also I'm a thrifting fanatic, have done it my whole life. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna just show you some basic ways on how to emulate um, the kind of girly, beachy, cutesy Brandy Melville look. If you want that advice, if you don't want it th that advice, just skip to this time point and you will get to the end of this video where I do a little cute conclusion for you. I love you. Um, let's get, let's, let's get started now. Top of the body, baby tees. Um, Brittany Melville, I feel like their like t-shirt design is very good. <laughs> Wait, damn it, this is Brandy Melville's t-shirt design, some of the things that are very important about it that make it fit the way it does is the sleeves are very short and they like go up your armpit like they're not like a, a loose sleeve. And the neck, the neck is very up here. It's not, you're not really getting a scoop neck. Sometimes they have scoop necks, but like typically you're gonna get one of these kind of necklines and it's cropped. It's not cropped ridiculously. It probably hits like my mid waist or like it probably hits like right under my waist. But yeah, that's what makes a Brandy Melville shirt. And how do you emulate that? One of the things you can do, and this is a very debated topic I've seen, is you can buy child youth size t-shirts. Now, I've seen a lot of different points of this. A lot of people say that it's very unethical to buy youth clothing from um, thrift stores because youths need those clothes and typically people who go to thrift stores are people who um, can't afford anything else. So, mm. And that is a very fair point. Some things I will add though. Thrift stores throw out so many clothes, <laughs> way more clothes than you think they do. It is a very common practice and way more waste goes 
than you think it does. So as much as I, I am all for um, being an ethical thrifter, you have to also realize that there's a point where it, it just doesn't matter because there will always be new clothes coming in, literally always. I don't think you singularly as a person are going to make enough damage so that no kids will ever have a baby, but will ever have a t-shirt. I'm sorry. I know it's for different people, they're gonna have different answers to that question. For me personally, my rule of thumb is there are two major thrift stores in my town that I go to. One is in a higher income area and one is in a lower income area. I don't take clothes from the lower income area. I don't take like child clothes from the lower income area because that section is not that big and people in lower income brackets are more likely to go there for their thrift store needs. Whereas the one that is in a higher income area, those rich babies are never wearing the same thing twice. Do you know what I found at one of those? I'm not going to grab it because it's too far away, but do you know what I found at one of those? I found a John Galliano, and if you don't know who John Galliano is, he designs, he designed for Dior, other people, but like he's very famously d designed for Dior. He is the guy in, um, who did the newspaper print that's his thing um i found a john galliano newspaper print youth shirt at this thrift store who what what who is this baby who is this rich baby wearing john galliano newspaper youth shirts i just want to talk so I don't really feel bad about taking those clothes because those rich babies wear John Galliano shirts while I wear thrifted baby shirts. Yeah, but if you don't want to buy baby shirts um, because you think it's unethical, that's completely all right with you. You can always go to Walmart and pick up a pack of youth shirts. You can buy t-shirts. Um, and you can buy um, girls tank tops, which kind of are like that cute little like lacy design. You can buy the, buy the men's t-shirts. Those are the best fit. And um, they're tank tops, which are kind of like a, um, like a ribbed tank top design, kind of like the one I'm wearing right now. Um, the only thing you really need to do to these is crop them. You can make it a nice crop or an unfinished crop. It's really up to you and your standards. But really what you're looking for when you're getting um, these t-shirts is you want something that is a boy's size um, because a boy's size is going to give you the high neckline and the cap shoulders like that and you're going to find that in youth apparel. If you're someone who's larger who cannot fit into youth apparel, valid, but I would just recommend going a size smaller than you usually do in men's section shirts. This is going to give you the exact same look. Now, if you want to jazz up your shirt like Brandy Melville does, um, you can do many, many things. You can do many things to your shirt. You can embroider it. I know how to embroider. I'm kind of bad at it, but I like doing it. You can fabric paint something on a shirt. It makes something super original and fun. And even though it may look a little crusty, you did it. And that's pretty cool. You can buy patches and put patches on it. I've never done that before, but like, go off, queen. Those are some things you can do to spice up your shirt. Ooh, one of my favorite things that I've actually done to a shirt that people have asked me if it was a Brandy Melville shirt before, and I was like, oh my god, no, I did this myself, is I got a youth male tank top the ribbed tank top that I was talking about, and I put a little heart, rhinestone heart on it, and people were like, oh my god, that looks like Brandy, something Brandy Melville would do. I'm like, yeah. Anyway, Brandy Melville will probably see this video and copy that idea. So do it before it's taken and you're just trying too hard. To get the Brandy Melville sweater kind of vibe, the most iconic sweaters that Brandy Melville has is their zip-up hoodies, their grandma sweaters, and their cardigans. For the zip-up hoodie, honestly, just go to the men's section, get yourself a 
larger, extra larger <laughs> zip up hoodie. Um, try to get it in one solid color. Try to make it a thick material because if it's a thin material, it's kind of going to look just not good. Um, eat like quicker, but if it's a nice, thick, sturdy material, it's gonna look nicer longer. Um, for Brittany Melville's kind of grandma-y looking sweaters, just honestly thrift your heart out for this one. Go to a thrift store in your area that is a little bit of a higher income area and or an area near a retirement home because you are going to find an abundance of grandma sweaters that probably are on, were on dead grandmas. That probably were owned by grandmas that are now dead. I should have worded that horribly. And I've had so much luck with that. I literally found this sweater the day I was tempted on buying a sweater like this exactly from Brittany Melville. So that's pretty cool. Oh, okay. Cardigans. Just try to get a... I think this is literally... This cropped black cardigan I have is literally my favorite piece of clothing that I own. Um, it's just my like go-to piece if I'm honest and you can replicate it. You can just buy a tank top that is tight on you, crop it or not if that's not your vibe but for this one you'd probably want to crop it, hem it if you want and then bob bing bob boom. I've done it with this one with this white cardigan and it was great. It worked out great. Pants. Brandy Melville pants kind of vary from season to season, but I would say for the current kind of look that Brandy Melville pants have, um, that very like baggy, low waist, not low waist, but like hanging on the low part of your waist, flare jean, you want to just go to your thrift store, get a pair of jeans that are like maybe a size too big for you, maybe two, whatever. You want it to, like, it was supposed to fit on your waist, but now it's kind of dropped to your hip bone. That's going to give you that, like, baggy look without making it, like, so baggy you, um, you know, look just like you're wearing pants that are far too big for you. And can y'all please stop doing that, like, shoe tie thing to make your jeans fit? I'm sorry, but it's so stupid. I literally can't stand it every time I see it. I'm like, just buy jeans that fit you. <laughs> um, but the one thing, the things you want to look out for, yeah, are like the drop waist like that. Make sure they're kind of like a mom jean size and or they have like a nice flared leg slash boot cut. And honestly, the low rise jean is coming back into style. Um, try it out. I love a good low rise jean. I know, that's controversial. A year ago, if you told me that, I would be like, ha 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 ha, no I don't like a low-rise jean. And then I'd be lying through my teeth. <laughs> Dresses. Dresses, I think, in my opinion, are Brandy Melville's like weakest thing they have. I've never seen a Brandy Melville dress where I'm like, oh my god, that's great. But the one thing I will say is I found this blue leopard print dress in the nightgown section of Walmart and it looks exactly like something I would have seen at Brandy Melville. So um, look at nightgown sections. Maybe don't go to Walmart. Just look at like nightgown, nightgown sections at your local thrift store um, and maybe you'll find a cute Brandy Melville dress. I always look in the nightgown section because I have a weird obsession with nightgowns. I want to make- I should make a video about nightgowns. About all my nightgown collection. Similar brands to look out for when you are shopping for Brandy Melville, but you don't want to buy a Brandy Melville, is look for Tommy Hilfiger. I feel like Tommy Hilfiger is one everywhere. I think I I see it so much at my work and so much when I'm thrifting. Tommy Hilfiger is your is your friend. It's that very like 90s, simple, but trendy for the time it was brands that you will find what you are looking for if you are looking at Tommy Hilfiger items. I'm not even kidding, like sometimes I'll see something and I'm like, that's Brandy Melville. And then I'm like, no, it's Tommy Hilfiger. 
weird um so yeah look at tommy hilfiger totally recommend another one that's kind of similar is calvin klein um i noticed with their jeans their jeans are quite similar um and just like again it's kind of the same thing it's like that very like simple cut trendy but not overly trendy you dig and if you actually want to find Brandy Melville, I would recommend going to secondhand stores, not thrift stores. You're going to have a higher chance of finding it. Places like Plato's Closet and Buffalo Exchange are perfect for that. I've never personally gone to a Buffalo Exchange because we don't have those in Canada, but I've heard they're good-ish, maybe. I don't know. In conclusion. In conclusion. Um, I am not going to tell you what to do. You can continue buying from Brandy Melville if you want or if you don't want. I personally will probably still buy from Brandy Melville if I'm honest. It's like the one fast fashion store I go to. Give me a break. Capitalism likes to do this thing where it puts the blame on you. It likes to make you feel bad for spending your hard earned money on trivial things like clothes, but it also puts the environmental blame on you. It's like at school, we're taught about doing things that are good for the environment, like, you know, closing lights before you leave a room, or um, recycle, or, um, you know, like turn off the tap when you're brushing your teeth, and stuff like that. But what they don't tell you is that corporations and things like fast fashion are literally ruining the planet. Like, literally, what was it? Like, Zara, like a couple of years ago, they like made a billion clothes I like items of clothes that is ridiculous that is like monstrous like that is more like you think you know how much a billion clothes is but you don't there aren't a I'm sorry <laughs> corporations are the ones to blame because they are the ones that are ruining our planet so you buying one cute crop top Yes, you know, you can make ethical decisions, I implore you to, but don't feel bad because it's not your fault. It's not your direct fault. But again, if you decide not to buy Brandy Melville after this, I completely understand. Um, I hope if you still like the style and you wanted some like tips and tricks on how to like still emulate the look, we'll help you out with that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess I feel like my conclusion at this point should just be in conclusion there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. But yeah. If you know me from before this video, thank you for um, watching and letting me take a break. <laughs> um, I finally feel kind of ready to start making videos again. Um, comment down below a smiley face if you made it this far. That's a kiss for you. Uh, follow me on Instagram because I want more Instagram followers. Okay, bye! <laughs>